What is up, you guys? It's Twinless Twin, and I'm doing another VOD review. Everyone say hi to Bones. Oh, wrong finger. Everyone say hi to Bones. Cat cam. You can't say that there's no cat cam. All right, so we're going to get right into this match. Violet submitted, and it's versus a deck that plays Gigantha. So we won the die roll, and we're playing against a deck that has Gigantha, um, and this is the hand that we open with. So when I see Gigantha, I immediately am thinking that we're either playing against Ruby Storm or most likely we're playing against Boros Energy. Probably, I'd have to check the recent, most recent meta share, but probably two-thirds of the time or maybe even three-fourths of the time it's Energy. Uh, and then one-fourth or one-third of the time it's going to be Ruby Storm. Regardless, I really like this hand. Uh, this hand has a Spell Snare, which is great against both decks. Counter Spell uh, isn't the best against Energy, but it's super viable on the play. I mean, just a, a way to trade with their two-for-one creatures like a Johnny and um, Amped Raptor uh, on the stack, as opposed to trading with a removal on the battlefield, is good. So I think Counter Spell is a completely fine card. And then we have a Preordain, a Feed the Cycle. Like, they're fine. Uh, I, I don't think that they're e exceptional or anything, but they're, they're fine. Um, so yeah, this hand against the Chagatha deck, I'm absolutely going to be keeping. So let's just go ahead and start to watch. Uh, Violet didn't do any commentaries, so it's going to be all me just commentating on the match. Um, okay, so we mulligan and uh, Violet, I would love to hear your, your reasoning for mulliganing so you can comment it down below or you can IM me about it. But my guess is your thought was you wanted to have a threat uh, and be proactive. I think that, uh, you know, the preordain helps you find a threat first of all, but even without the preordain, I think that reactive hands like this are just a nature of this deck. Um, we, you know, yes, we would love to have Psychic Frog on turn two every game, but you you only have four frogs. So you're never gonna find that every time. Um, and resources are valuable, uh, less so against energy, or sorry, less so against storm, but very much so against energy. Resources are valuable, so I wouldn't let that go. Um, I guess maybe also you were like slightly afraid of a turn one ocelot pride, uh, which is fair. It, it could be a little bit scary there, but we even can like preordain turn one and look for that removal spell. We kind of have a feeling that they're on um they're on energy or we could just like even fetch a surveil in turn one and we're pretty close to feed the cycling like guide of souls on turn one you don't need a removal spell right away because you have counter spell and spell snare to keep additional creatures off the table which means they're not going to really be able to trigger the guide of souls right away and then we could eventually feed the cycle it um so yeah i, I definitely would have kept that previous hand but we do mulligan so we'll go from there All right, and I agree with how you resolve this mulligan, and this hand does seem like it's a keep. And yes, they do have Guide of Souls. So I guess going back, like your hand on the draw, your first seven on the draw might have been more reasonable to, to mulligan when you're on the draw, but even then we only have four Fatal Push, which is, in my opinion, a big downside of the blue black deck is only having four fatal push but you have to play with that in mind like sometimes they are going to have the initiative against you by playing a one drop and you won't immediately have an answer uh but limiting the damage afterwards with spell snare counter spell would have set you up pretty nicely i think um Now, wow, okay. Funny enough, I mean, the Spell Snare would have done nothing against Guide of Souls into Double Ocelot Pride, so maybe the Mulligan ends up rewarding you in this game. Um, time will tell. But yeah, I think that you... I like Bowmastering one here. Um, you're going to be doing that. And I need to turn off the... You have the MTGO audio full blast on this recording. <laughs> Uh, and I like passing here. So passing means you can double block, potentially bait them into like using a galvanic discharge or something. Uh, so yeah, you can definitely just pass, like let them do something first. You don't need to bow master. 
And they could like have Blood Moon, for example, which you would probably want to spell pierce. They could have Fable, which you'd want to spell pierce. Um, they go for Flage, and you can let Flage resolve. They're probably going to kill your Bowmasters, uh, and then you actually can then Bowmasters to grow the Bowmasters. Okay, so you, you Bowmasters here. That's also fine. Um, like, technically, they're, they were going to attack, and then you could just Bowmasters ping them, and you have a 2-2, two, two, and then you just block their 1-1 one, one for free. So you would have done 1 damage to them. Very minor, but... Yeah, you, you could have done that. I guess also you gave them the option of shooting the orc army because you did it before Flage resolved. So yeah, there's. I know that you were probably going to play the Bowmasters, but like waiting on the timing there would have been okay. It give them less information to target with Flage. Actually, realize I'll just look over here. Okay. Amped Raptor. I'm pretty much always happy to counterspell an Amped Raptor. I mean, it just always gets good value. Um, if we have, like, Bowmasters in hand, I might let the Amped Raptor resolve. Like, if we have no creatures and they have some bricks. Like, if we didn't have any creatures in play, they could hit Galvanic Discharge. But even then, it would still give them some energy, because they could, like, target their own Amped Raptor. But yeah, I, I would counterspell it here. We're also just happy to get cards in the yard for the Merktide without, like, extra lands. If we had lands 3 and 4, or even, like, 1 land, maybe I would hold the counterspell, because... Playing Merktide plus holding up Counterspell in this matchup is, like, uh, one of the key ways to get free wins, basically. Um, they don't have a ton of answers, mm, and they do have Ragavan, so I, I definitely would not Counterspell this, but you might have... Uh, you don't want to Forge either. That's brutal. You know, I, it's always tough because a lot of the energy lists don't even play Ragavan, so I'm not gonna fault you for attacking with your your bowmasters um but yeah it feels really bad to to have to counterspell this because we just had the bowmasters sitting around maybe you didn't want to attack with bowmasters but I, I see a lot of value in attacking with the bowmasters like we have a merktide regent sitting in our hand we're gonna play a six six now um Right, I would personally play a 6-6 six, six now, and like we've gotten some additional life off them. I think this Bowmasters has hit them like three times. So, pretty good. Chain to the Rocks. This new tech that they've been adapting... It's pretty good. I think that it's it's smart of them to play the chain to the rocks because they they know that Merktide is you know a really popular card. Oh, I hate it every time they play Amptraptor. It's always Amptraptor into a Johnny. I kid you not. I, I swear to God, they must have like ten of Johnnies in their deck because it's always Amptraptor into a Johnny. Now hitting that. Um... Okay, hold on. So hitting that that Bowmasters is nice. Let's think about what we want to do here. Um, what I'm like afraid of is they have Flage potentially coming pretty soon, uh, which is scary. Um, but they've been missing land drops, so we think they have spells in hand, uh, of which I think they have two cards, it says. Tricky, tricky spot, honestly. Um, I don't feel great about it. I guess my first thought is I want to try to kill them pretty quickly here because the Flage is going to be really tough for us to deal with in a longer game. Um, but so what's the best way to kill them is the question. We could attack with the Orc army. They probably block with the Raptor, which is kind of free. And then we could Bowmasters. 
shoot their face, eat the raptor. Is that better than just bow mastering the raptor beforehand? I see. You're, I think you're about to push the Ajani, which might be the right instinct. Honestly, I mean the Ajani is kind of scary. Um, I could see like attacking with bowmasters also. It kind of telegraphs that you have a bowmasters, but maybe your opponent makes a mistake because like if you attack with the bowmasters and the orc army, they could make a block. For example, like. Amstraptor block the orc army, Ajani block the bowmasters, and then we just shoot the um, shoot the Ajani with our other bowmasters. Or they block bowmasters with the cat token, Raptor with the orc army. Well, no, because we want to be able to. We don't want to chump attack. This is a tricky spot, for sure. I think the play I'm gonna make is like Bowmasters, the Amptraptor, and attack for three. And if they block, they flip their Ajani, but they don't actually have any ways to protect it yet. But like, they can make a two-two. If they draw a land, we're probably gonna lose anyways. So we kind of have to hope they don't draw lands. If they don't draw lands, I don't know what spells we're hoping they have. We're in, we're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I guess let's see what happens. So you push that. Now you can't attack. Not attacking does not feel good. Well, they drew Arena of Glory, which was like the nut draw. Maybe just passing was okay there. I don't know. That was pretty gross. Yeah, we're, we're very, very dead here. All right. So sideboarding. Yep. We're bringing the scoldings, the surgicals. Uh, oh, I don't like cutting Murktide. I mean, I guess we did see the um, Chain to the Rocks, which makes Murktide a little bit less appealing, but like overall Murktide is still pretty, pretty good against their deck. I don't know why I said pretty, pretty good, but it's, it's very good against their deck. A key question in the Boros matchup is like, do you want to try to Harbinger them? They're a Blood Moon deck themselves, but you can probably cut them off of a color with Harbinger. I think I lean towards no still, but it, I mean, it depends how desperate the matchup is. If the matchup's really desperate, then having like a card that's high variance, sometimes great, sometimes bad, is probably okay. Because you can just steal games with it. I think the matchup is like maybe slightly unfavored for blue black, but not by a huge amount. Yeah, this hand is a good keep, um, and I think that I agree with playing Consider on their turn. Just get a better idea of what, what type of hand they're working with. Um, the only reason I might be interested in preordaining is, like, finding a Fawn would be busted here to protect our Psychic Frog, so preordain gives the most looks for that, but... I think that Consider is, is fine. Yeah, I think that I'm okay with bidding the sink because we have the preordain. I mean, you definitely do want a third land and probably eventually a fourth land, but sink is like three life, which is really painful against Mardu Boros, and binning an extra card to make your Merc Tides faster is really nice. Oh, they bin Flage with the Elegant Parlor. So lucky. I like that you just jammed the frog too. 
I think that a lot of times on the play, that's the right way to go. Just make them have it. They have Celestial Purge. That's fine, though. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good draw. <laughs> that's why you keep Harbinger in your deck against the red-white energy deck. We might be going to game three pretty quickly here. And now I'm just thinking, like, how can I get this game over as fast as possible? So um, I'm going to, like, play Preordain and then probably play Frog. I'm not really interested in the Deluge or the Push. Yeah, I think I agree with all that. Yep, get this Frog down. Um, get in for two with my Harbinger. I would, I would definitely attack. They, they can't flash anything. And, like, this has become just, like, how much, how quickly can we kill them? Okay, they scoop it up. Yeah, just you don't want to give them more draw steps. I think that maybe, maybe you clipped through combat. But if you had a reason not to attack, I'll tell you that, yeah, I would have attacked. So, sideboarding in this matchup, I mean, I think... I probably would take out the, the Harbingers on the draw. Um, I think I'd take out Feed the Cycle, maybe. And then I think I would have in the Considers and maybe like the Counterspell. Counterspell is just tricky against Boros. Like it's often not trading up on mana, but it can be pretty important to have still. Because like you... Fatal Push can't kill Gigantha, for example. Um, that's come up for me before. All right, so they play God of Souls. And we have no reason to push right now. Let's be patient. Here's the problem with pushing now is they can play an Ajani or an Amped Raptor and we would have much rather Stern Scolding. Uh, and the God of Souls isn't actually doing anything, doing anything in that spot. Not only that, but like if they, yeah, if they play like an Ocelot Pride, maybe we try to set up Toxic Deluge to get, you know, a two for one or something like that, so. I definitely would have passed, and then after they play the Ocelot Pride, I think that's when I would have Fatal Push the Guide of Souls. And then here in this spot, I think I'm playing the Psychic Frog. I mean, making them answer this frog is going to mean that they're developing less. Uh, and oh, I would have fetched an island, though, because we already have one like watery grave and we're probably gonna fetch a swamp with this polluted delta because we have harbinger but yeah making them like answer your frog instead of developing their own threat means it's more likely we can kind of get them with this harbinger to me this just says they have like galvanic discharge and they're they want the first strike damage and then they're gonna galvanic discharge you i'm not even sure i'd block Honestly. Yeah. I probably would have just gone no blocks. But I guess the downside of that Yeah, and I think letting it letting it go is okay. The downside of no blocks is they just get like a ton of chump blockers. Oh, nice. Bone Masters is a great draw. We just need to keep in mind that we want to fetch the the Swamp, and we want to play Bone Masters and hold up Stern Scolding. And hopefully they're using all their fetch lands right now so that they don't have anything to play off of um, Harbinger in the Seas.
think that I'm fine flashing in uh, Bowmasters here. Actually, I take it back. I am not, I think. I think I'd wait. I mean, holding up the counters is nice. I would have probably bowmastered before I uh, before the ocelot pride triggered. And then in this spot Well, first of all, you want the swamp because you might harbinger them. But also I'd flash in bowmaster and kill their ocelot pride. Maybe your thought is you're going to Toxic Deluge, but the problem with Deluging is that you're uh, tapping out, and then they could probably flage you. I, I don't really know if we can afford to Bowmasters before blocks. I mean, I really, yeah, I really wish we had done it last turn. Um, but now that we have the counter spell, we'd like to hold that up. But yeah, we've let them get quite a few cats here. And they keep passing with mana up, which does make me think they probably have like Galvanic Discharge or something. Um, so I'm not really too keen on playing Harbinger of the Seas anytime right now. I think I'm just going to pass here and uh, probably try to like double, like block each of their cats and then hope they escape Flage, I counterspell, and then slam Harbinger of the Seas. Something like that. Or... They don't slam flage. I don't have to counter spell like stern scolding something, and then I draw an island and I can slam merc tide with counter spell up, and that's how I win. So a couple of different scenarios where I can I can win here, but yeah, letting them get like they got two extra cats, I think. Um, so now they get to like kind of make us do something, and it it can totally change how this game is gonna play out. I don't know how it'll play out, but if we had stopped those two extra cats by bowmastering a turn earlier on my like second main phase, we would have been in nice nice shape. Okay, here's an ocelot pride. I think I'm okay using the stern scolding. Um, Yeah, and then let's counterspell and um, let's harbinger and then just hope their last card's not another galvanic discharge. I think it's kind of our best our best shot here. And wow, and we drew the force of negation. I mean, that's that's nearly I think the perfect draw because now we can protect our harbinger. So they're I mean they they do have the gigantha. Oh, the one ring. You're kidding me. Oh, that's so painful. Man. Yep, we gotta force this. You're never gonna beat a one ring when they're at 19 life. They'll find their planes after drawing 50 cards. And yeah, we, I mean, we don't have a, a swamp because we fetched the Undercity Sewers, which is, which is tough, and Man, they're just also just drawing like and they drew the planes I Violet you got robbed honestly I mean I think that we could have done a little bit more to, to play this game in a different way that would have gone better for us but on the other hand they drew the planes they drew fable like that's they had the one ring, so they had all the cards they could still cast instead of all the cards they were locked off of casting this game. I mean, again, it does show Harbinger is kind of uh, a two-edged sword, so um, not a two-edged sword necessarily, but I guess it's, it's, it's hit or miss is what I'm trying to say. 
sometimes the card is really strong for you and sometimes it just doesn't really do too much. this point neither of these cards are going to get us there i do think yeah you're right we need to cycle through these preordains we're basically looking for like murktide regent is the key card we do kind of also want a land but i don't think i would top a land because there's so many lands in our deck i would just be digging specifically for murktide regent i guess this lets you leave up no actually you're, you should you're right to top this because they're going to be able to cast flage this turn and we need to counterspell it um and the nice thing is, is if we counterspell it, it sets them back a turn at least. Because they use their treasures. No, that's not true, because they have reflection to copy the shaman again. Alright, well at this point we're just, um, we're, we're dead. If we find, yeah, I don't think we have any outs at this point. Nope. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. It's possible if we... Thank you for sharing this VOD, first of all. Um, it's possible if we'd fetched the Swamp earlier on when we had the Harbinger in hand. Like, maybe we could have gotten there, but it was, it was a tricky match. Um, I think the Bowmasters also was a point where flashing that in, denying them the tokens could have let us play a, a, a bit uh, better or less, less awkwardly. Um, but also, they, you know, drew the fable, and they had the, the one ring, which was tough. I don't know. I don't know. Um, maybe we didn't need to stern scolding, because if we, like... <laughs> but that's because we drew force negation. We didn't have the force negation in hand, or I would have pointed out that I want to hold on to a blue card to pitch to force. Um, that's not Merktide Regent, right? Like, that, that's the ideal scenario. But as is, I kind of think that you, you're you right to, to Stern Scolding in that spot also. Um, but thank you very much for submitting this VOD. I hope that some of my, my commentary and rambling was helpful and uh, you you have, a, you know, some different thoughts on how you'd play this matchup going forward. It's, it is a really tricky match, pretty complex. I lose it a lot and i think that like half the time i lose it it's because i misplay um and the other half is because they blood moon me i keep getting blood mooned by boros which is driving me nuts uh, as a a blood moon player myself um but yeah this 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 was a pretty interesting match thank you for submitting it and uh, thank you everyone who's watching i hope you guys all have a good rest of your day and uh, i'll see you in the next video peace